Hey everyone, welcome to Will Taylor's String Studio. I can provide lessons from anywhere in the world if you have a great internet connection uh, over Skype. So this particular video is going to be about the topic of <coughs> getting away from sounding uh, having a classical sound in a non-classical setting. So for instance, you've been trained all your life as a string player to play in a classical setting and then you're invited by your friends or you know, you have a, a new interest to learn how to improvise, play and, uh, folk music, play fiddle music, play jazz, play blues. How do you enter that? Well, I'm going to give you a couple tips here on how some really easy things that you can do with your playing right away to make it sound less classical. You know, So for instance, it, most classical players, and you know, me included, when I was when we were taught in the beginning, we were taught to make you know really rich sound from the beginning of the bow to the end. So you know, we're like, so you know, very rich sound from the beginning of the bow to the end of the bow. Um, and that doesn't necessarily tr that doesn't translate over as well. What I want you to learn from this video is that you can take what you've learned from the classical world and making a beautiful tone, and yet temper that with these other techniques and other approaches. This is just a, a quick fix. Obviously, you know the players that are the non-traditional players have spent years and years, just like you have, being a classical player, learning how to play their particular sound. But if this is something you want to explore, I'm going to give you a few little tips here how you can do that. Um, I like to take the best of what I learned from the classical uh, string tradition and bring that over, but still attempt to bring some authenticity to the style. If I'm playing fiddle music, if I'm playing jazz, then I want to get at the core and the heart of that music. So how would we do that? So let's take, for instance, um, a show can farewell. Everybody kind of knows that. So most classical players, if they don't have any fiddle experience whatsoever, they would just read it straight and it would probably sound, you know, something like this. <laughs> very straight. And uh, what to me makes the non-classical styles, you know, gorgeous and beautiful and interesting is that these uh, players who mainly learn by ear, they are a lot of little subtleties in all these music and they're, they're very much rhythmic based music. Fiddle music came from a tradition where the fiddle was providing all of the accompaniment for dances. There were no guitars and basses. The fiddle could, could uh, you know, run a dance in a, in a barn all by itself. So a lot of the music um, it was rhythmic based first. So and although there's a lot of these little subtleties in the bowing, especially in the right hand uh, with the bow, that uh, emphasize and create a really strong rhythmic bed. Okay, So um, and I'm going to show you that. that. That applies over to jazz. If you listen to jazz pianists, and first of all let me just say that you know I, I want to encourage you to explore listening to players that you love in these other styles, jazz, folk, whatever, and listen very intently on how they shape the rhythms in their, their lines. And you're going to find something that's very interesting. I'm going to point, point this out. But So some of these subtleties that I think make that music very rich, and instead of playing everything so literal, classical music gets literal. You read what's on the page. Whereas with folk music, um, you have musicians adding in their own ornamentation. Kind of like Baroque music, I guess you could say that too. Um, and there are these little subtleties that, that add flavor and make it sound more authentic. So if you're playing uh, a show can farewell, you know, you might, let me just do a little bit of that. Mm. So you can see there's some little, blip, blip, little ornaments that I threw in. I don't even know what I played. I was just improvising. I wasn't thinking about it per se but it's something that I practice. So, so for instance, you could, you could just take that tune and um, basically this tune is in D major scale and uh, look for places to add little what we call hammer-ons. These are hammer-ons, very simply. In fiddle music there's a lot of them. So if you have a, a melody, for instance in, in the Shokin Farewell, you have that. You could play it. And notice that second note, that D, I had a little ornament C-sharp to D going into it. So it wasn't so direct and so exact, you see? So you can, and you can go overboard with this, but to experiment and really learn what I'm talking about is to take your melody and just find out what's possible. 
So that one I did a, a B to a C sharp. Or you could even go a, a to B. See? And then this is E to F sharp. My target note being F sharp here. So you can approach each note from above or below diatonically. That means a note within the scale. And on the downbeat, so if I was going to the F sharp, it would be. And then here, if I'm going to a G, G is the target note. So normally you'd play. You're, you're going to play. Okay, and if you want to make up a scale, you could do that, practice this, you could be. So normally a scale would be. Right, so you go. See what I mean? And you could start from the top, too. Which, but in most cases, that's not that's not uh, going to happen. Uh, but you could you could do that. So that's the uh, the hammer on. And also, there's a tendency to not play such an intense tone that that in, in the fiddle music tradition, the folk music. So you're not going to be going. You're not going to keep it going. You're going to have a lighter stick. So another thing is the slide. I, I didn't mention that, but. So there I went, I went off from a B, down to the A. Now if you notice, I am I have a lighter bow and I'm using um, accents to bring out certain notes and that emphasizes the rhythm, that's back to the rhythm aspect of fiddle music. So um, let me touch on that real quick. Remember, this is just a quick video. If you want to learn more of these, you can study with me over Skype, or if you're in Austin, Texas, um, I'm available private for, privately for private lessons, and I can go more into this in more detail with you on, in person. But, <clears throat> so, uh, let me get a little bit into the rhythmic side of things. So if you have, for instance, uh, let's take uh, Whiskey Before Breakfast, okay? If you're a classical player, you play it like... Let's see if I can do it like a classical player. All the notes are the same. Okay, now here's the difference between... Now you can tell how I'm accenting certain notes and that backbeat feel, those, those little rhythmic accents um, help propel that music forward so it's not all the same. And you'll find this in jazz too. So you're, you've got most of your bowing kind of light. Here's an exercise you can try. Just pick one note. In this case, I'm playing an A. So, um, so here's straight with no accents. Here's accents. This is actually a shuffle bowing. Well, actually, second line. Too. So as you can see, most of the bow, most of the notes are in this light kind of feel, which is kind of against classical playing. And then other notes are sticking out. Those are the notes that are providing a real, very much a rhythmic anchor to the tune. So uh, the way I recommend practicing that is just taking one note and making up a rhythm and get off of uh, playing it classically. You'd be playing it like this. No, we don't want that. See how it sounds classical? Okay, so we discussed hammer-ons, uh, playing with this kind of bowing with an accent, with, uh, with the accents thrown in. Uh, we also have the slide, I did that. Uh, there also are bow effects, and I want to show you in jazz how what I just did with the fiddle music, how it applies in jazz. So, for instance, if I'm playing, um, I'll just improvise something, okay, in uh, G blues. Now you notice that I'm not playing like all the notes equal like you would in classical music. Classical music could be like, let's see if I can do this. I'll start with a rhythm, so by myself. Okay, that's that's as close as I can get to playing how a classical player might do it. But if I back off and not scrub every note so that it's equal in volume, then I can improvise rhythms how I feel and make it sound more in the groove. So <laughs> So 
So you can see that there are certain notes that stick out. If you listen to a jazz pianist or a guitar player, you're going to hear that that um, sort of grooving backbeat feel. You know, is related to how you know a drummer might play. Okay, so that is going to sound a lot more in the style of jazz or fiddle music than you know. You're going to sound less classical if you learn how to do that. So that's another thing. <laughs> Okay, and uh, those are some ideas. So the other thing you can do is bowing effects. So again, classical approach is to have you know a real even tone, which you you know. That kind of thing, which you get you you can employ in, in your in your playing in other styles. I'm not saying get rid of that, but you want to let go of the vibrato. That's another thing I'm going to mention. Is this constant fast vibrato, and you want to let maybe practice letting that go all together and bringing it in with much slower vibrato. So if I'm playing, let's say I'm playing uh, in a sentimental mood. Mm. See how it's slower? And now I'm employing some of those techni techniques that I already talked about. I did the hammer on, I did the slide, and you know, I'm playing the melody in my own way. I'm not following it exactly as on the page. I'm making variations. Okay. So, oh, but bowing effects. Now, I don't know if you can see this, but if I'm playing rock music, I can be. So I've got the bow turned on the side. And I can get close to the bridge, and I can control that amount of grit depending on the sound that I want, so that it's not always this classical, beautiful. If I want to make it a little dirty, especially if I'm playing blues, okay? Now you notice I'm, I'm using a really fast vibrato in that case, so let's make that kind of sound. So I emphasize that sort of ponticello sound when you're playing the blues. And you want to leave lots of space. So in this case I don't have any backing guitar, but... So if I'm playing... So in that case, I kind of brought together all the elements that we've been talking about. Here's a tamron. And I'm really feeling like back behind the beat. I'm holding that swing back, back as far as possible. So if you're interested in learning more of these ways of playing a string instrument, violin, viola, cello, I am here to help you out. From anywhere in the world, Will Taylor's Music Lessons, Will Taylor's String Studio, Jazz, Classical, Folk Music, Fiddle, uh, arranging. Uh, love to help you out. Love to find out who you are and talk to you about your playing. And once again, this video is about taking your classical sound out of the mix and how to play in these non-classical, other alternative styles, traditional styles of music that are ryth rhythmically based and have improvisation, how to play in those styles without sounding so classical. So there's some techniques for you. Uh, let me know if you have any comments or questions below. I'll try to answer them. And you can always reach me at the email address below and the phone number below. I'd love to connect with you. I look forward to seeing you and meeting you and helping you with your string playing. All right, let's get together with this soon. All right, thanks a lot. Talk to you later.